locked inside your heart-shaped box for weeks. I'm here with uh, Derek Bort, director of the Tour de Force, Unhinged. Would you describe it as that yourself? Uh, you know, look, I, I, I'm happy if someone else describes it as that, but, but uh, um, you know, I, I, I'll describe it as, uh, as uh, a fun, crazy thrill ride, 90 minutes of uh, edge of your seat, white knuckle kind of uh, uh, escapism. Or as you said, tour de force. I mean, it's, tour de force size better. It's so, so uh, such yeah, a, such an underused uh, phrase these days. I find. Uh, how did this project come to be? This was just one that um, you know Solstice bought the script and and you know shot it over to me, and we had been looking for something to do together, and and uh, they asked me if I'd read it, and I I read it quickly and. And thought it was a great read, and couldn't wait to see what was going to happen on the next page. And and uh, you know, then upon uh, you know after first reading, you know, kind of started thinking about some of the other uh, more complex things going on in the in the script, and just wanted to do it. And and then um, made an offer to Russell, and you know, met with him a couple times, and. He was in, and then all of a sudden we were making a movie. Well, uh, I don't know if you've heard his stories. I, I listened to a couple of them uh, while I was getting I was getting psyched up to go watch the movie. He said uh, he <laughs> read the script. He was not convinced, but he had this formality of having to go to dinner with yourself. What was said over that dinner that ah. changed his mind? <laughs> um, you know, I think it was a combination of things. I think that, as he tells it, the role scared him, you know, and I think that he, he, he realized that, you know, those are the kind of roles he wants to take, you know, and then he watched, um, um, American dreamer, my last film and, and really, I think he really appreciated it. And, um, you know, he, he, I guess that that's what started getting him to, to uh you know come on board and and uh i don't know there was anything specific said as much as just we just kind of clicked and um you know uh realized there was a lot of work to do to try to find this character and try to make this film and and uh, uh you know off we went uh can we talk about the trailer for the movie because uh, that's something that got me really excited like especially with the the musical choice and the editing, like uh, it really felt like a, a throwback to a 90s movie or uh, an 80s movie per se. It didn't feel like, uh, I don't know, like the last 10 years of movies has not been great. A lot of superhero movies there, you know, there's there's not much room for a, a movie like this in uh, the modern schedule. You know what I mean? Was that something that you intended on? I mean, you know, I, I'd always seen this film as as a kind of what I remember as a drive-in movie, you know, like a, the kind of film that you you know go to the drive-in to see. That was, I think I saw you know things like Cannonball Run at the drive-in, which was obviously not the same kind of film, but just you know uh, the, some of the car stuff was, and and um, but just gritty and and you know uh, gratuitous and and you know fun for a drive-in movie it just felt like a drive-in movie to me and uh that's kind of you know where my head was you know as it relates to the trailer i mean you know the guys in marketing came up with the the idea of uh of using the a, a cut of the nirvana song which i thought was really cool um i i won't take any credit for that but um but no you're right it does sort of play like that and and you know i think that a lot of times uh you know, we, we want to go and sit in a theater and, and, and just lose ourselves in, in whatever's on screen. And, and, and this film, I think, does that. You know, you're, you're, you're having seen it with 450 people in a room. You're, you're, it's amazing to see the, the tension in the room and the, and the people gripping their seats and, and gasping. And, you know, it really does play well on a big screen in a room full of people and, 
And I think that's what that's what appealed to me about it. And, and whether that's something that is timely or 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 retro or whatever you want to call it, you know, I I think that um, there's some universal, you know, kind of uh, appeal to that you know immersive experience that we have at the at the cinema. It's true. Another thing I I, I felt from the trailer, like I, I may have voiced it twice, I may have voiced it two hundred times, but uh, it, <laughs> it it felt like uh, maybe two hundred, maybe two hundred. <laughs> most of those analytics for me, um, it felt like a merge of falling down with the Hitcher, and uh, to me, the Hitcher is one of the best movies ever made. So that's why I was so excited to see this. Uh, did you draw any inspiration from those movies while making this? Sure, yeah. I mean, among other, I went back to Duel and even Jaws. I mean, you know, Russell's character to me, you know, I, I always thought of him kind of like the shark in Jaws. I felt that when I was watching it. wreaks havoc and, and then he's gone and, and you don't know when he's going to show up again. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, th those are all those are all movies that I... Um, that I looked to. I mean, when we were in pre-production a week before we started shooting, my production designer uh, said said that uh, Jaws was showing on the big screen in New Orleans. So I took you know a bunch of the crew and we went, we went to go see Jaws on the big screen, which was kind of a great way to kick things off. Uh, let me ask you about that, Mr. Crow again. <clears throat> like someone said to me, uh, Daniel Day Lewis wouldn't be caught dead looking like this. He should be called Russell High Cholesterol Crow because he's quite big in this movie. Was that a conscious decision or was that something you talked about that you wanted to make him look bigger, maybe older? Well, I, look, he had just come off his uh, Golden Globe winning performance as Roger Ailes. And, you know, uh, there was certainly no reason... Um, to, to wait for him to, to, to make any kind of changes. I mean, you know, he, w the way that he looked, his physicality worked for the role. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, uh, I always saw it as a positive. So I, I don't know. I don't, you know, it is weird when you see people that, you know, people want to, want to, you know, say something about the weirdest things, I guess, you know, and, and, um, you know, uh, he, he gave a spectacular performance as, as Roger Ailes in The Loudest Voice and, uh, you know, award-winning performance and, and, you know, came straight to work with me. And, you know, uh, we did discuss it and it worked for the film. So, but it wasn't something that, that you were thinking, this is what he should look like. This, this was part of, it was like a naturally created uh, aesthetic. Um well, I think it's it's look, it's a combination of things. I mean, I think that this guy had a physicality about him on the page. You know, the character as written had a physicality to him that that you know, uh that made sense with with what, you know, Russell brought to the table. So, you know, it it all worked out well. Do 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 this is going to sound weird, but like uh like when I, I saw the movie this week and uh, like I was comparing it to The Hitcher and uh, I, I think his performance is it's 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 up there. You know what I mean? Like it's it's up there with Rooker. It's 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 definitely uh, strong. Do you sit back to yourself and think this? I can't believe I've made this. It, like it almost rivals The Hitcher. Like. Do you ever? Um, I mean, I never I, I, I think that, you know, it's weird. I mean when you when you finish with a film and you put it out there you know you kind of have no control over the perception of it so it's hard to kind of try to, 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 to tie anything to to the perceptions of the film after the fact or or you know uh, I'm so close to the film because I've seen it 2,000 times right now um, you know I, I love to, to go back to you know, a film I made 10 years ago and rewatch it because I can finally see it maybe, you know, slightly, slightly uh, more objectively, let's say, um, you know, I, I, I look forward to to uh, to seeing, you know, how I feel about the film in 10 years. You know, I mean, it's I'm, I'm so close to it right now. It's hard for me to 
kind of, uh, you know, to, to think in that way, let's say. Okay. <laughs> um, what's next for yourself personally? Do you have any projects lined up? Um, I mean, you know, you always have to have, you know, multiple irons in the fire and I've got a few that are, you know, kind of, kind of hovering around the starting gate, you know, and, and you never know what's going to go. I mean, right now, obviously there's, we're dealing, uh, you know, as a, as a, a planet, we're dealing with some, some things that we haven't dealt with in a hundred years or so in terms of, of, you know, what the pandemic does, not only to production and exhibition of films, but also just, just life on, on earth. So, you know, uh, I don't know which one's going to go, you know, I think that obviously people start to look at productions as, as, you know, uh, as to how they're, how are they COVID friendly? You know, can you shoot this film with a skeleton crew or can you do this in a contained way? And, you know, uh, you know, there was one project that I thought might go that I know there's just, it's just not a practical project, you know, in the COVID world that we're living in right now. So, and uh, others that may become more practical. So, um, you know, uh, I've got a few things lined up and, and it's a question of, you know, kind of seeing which thing, which one moves to the front right now, let's say. I'm always uh, superstitious about talking too much about what's Would next. Would you have anything in the same vein as Unhinged? Same sort of genre? Um, you know, I've never been, you know, really like genre specific in the in the in the material that i'm drawn to and it's just about you know what what challenges me and what scares me and what uh you know what do i feel like is is good material that comes my way and and uh sure i mean you know i'd love I, I had so much fun um you know dealing with the action sequences and the stunts and everything that i would i would absolutely like to do more um uh, more work that involved those kind of things. You know, I, I absolutely uh, want to work with Russell again. You know, we've we've been looking at a few things together, and um, you know, uh, but but uh, you never know which what's going to be next, or or you know, look, I always feel like you never know if you're ever going to work again. You know, I mean, it's just sort of I never take this for granted that this is, um, you know, uh, that I'm entitled to to another film. You know, so. To, I just need to keep, you know, rolling my sleeves and keep grinding forward and self-generating, you know, writing my own material as well as reading, you know, hoping to find incoming material. And, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, you never know day to day what's going to happen. I understand. Uh, obviously the cinema's been hit quite hard with the, the pandemic. Uh, do you think Unhinged is suffering from that or... Excuse me. Uh, do you think Unhinged has suffered from that? Um, you know, I don't know yet. Um, you know, I think that uh, we don't know what the new normal is going to be yet. You know, I think we're, we'll know that soon enough. And, and, you know, when your capacity for, for, for theaters is, is, you know, 25% of normal, um, you know, that's going to obviously have an effect, but maybe you can add extra screens to help offset that. I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think the film has suffered yet. Um, you know, I think that ask me, you know, three months from now or six months from now, I might, I might, uh, you know, have a better perspective on that. But, uh, you know, I think people want to go to the, to the theater. I think people want to go see films, um, and I think as long as they can do it safely, it's a good thing. You know, I think that as long as the, the protocols are put in place for disinfecting and checkerboard seating and staggered times of, of you know, shows and whatnot, I think that, that it's something that, you know, just uh, it's escapism. And, it, and it's, uh, it's something that, that, you know, I'm sure just from what I hear from people, I mean, they're, 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 you know, they're ready to go back out to the movies. So, um you know, we'll see what happens. Well, with uh, the onset of streaming, uh, do you think that the cinema as we know it or have known it, like, like as, I, as I said earlier to you, I feel like the last 10 years of cinema has changed so drastically from what it used to be. Uh, what, what do you see the future of cinema being? 
Wow. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think that, that one thing that I see is that, that it, on the independent film side, a lot of things that used to, that, you know, a lot of films that used to get made that were true, you know, what I would call indie films don't really get made anymore. But that those kind of films now really are are uh, what you see, you know, w being made in the episodic world. You know, I think that, that a lot of times people take more chances in the episodic world now on, on more sort of niche programming, you know, kind of, kind of uh, very specific uh, glimpses into a world that we may not have seen before and, and, you know, characters that, you know, feel to me like in, in that kind of indie film of 10 or 20 years ago are now going to, to episodic. So, um, you know, uh, and then I think you you know, features are are at least on the theatrical side are gravi gravitating toward, towards towards the event films. Um, you know, just because uh, I guess they make money, and you know, it's uh, when you're putting that kind of money uh, at risk. You know, you kind of it's so. You know, as far as what's going to happen, you know, I, I, I know people, I feel like people want to go to the movies, you know, and, and uh, places where you can go to a to a theater that's got, you know, a few hundred seats and see a packed film, you know, where everybody's sort of, sort of in, it, in it together and, and it's a huge screen. And, you know, I, I, but I also think there's merit to having, the, you know, sort of micro cinema where there's, you know, a... a 10 theaters that all have, you know, 25 to 75 seats and you've got variety, you know, um, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I hope that, you know, I hope the movies live somehow through all of this. Um, <clears throat> do, do you think, uh, a, th there's potential for a death of, uh, cinema as we know it? Like, uh, I mean, like I, your film, as, as I said earlier, your film feels like a little bit of a throwback to like the type of film that uh, I would have wanted to watch 10, 20 years ago. And uh, sometimes I see this onslaught of Star Wars and stuff, you know, in that vein. And uh, it gets tiresome. Do you know what I mean? Do you think there's, there's a possibility of oversaturating that market and completely destroying the the whole industry? Uh, you know, look, I, I would never take for granted that, that, that the industry is something that can just weather anything and everything that comes its way and just take for granted that it's always going to be here. So sure. I mean, I think that there's there, it has to evolve. It has to, uh, you know, keep itself in check. Otherwise, sure. There's a chance it could go away. And, and, and uh, I'm someone that hopes that it never does. Do you think there's competition from uh, various uh, places like uh, YouTube, uh, TikTok, uh, other uh, video platforms, the short form uh, movies? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that it's, uh, I mean, I guess it's competition. I mean, I don't know that it's direct comp competition because I think it's a different experience. However, um, you know, it's... Uh, these other platforms exist and they're getting viewership. So in some way they are competition and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it'll be exciting to see what happens. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, well, I've chewed up enough of your time for today. I <laughs> want to thank you for uh, joining me and having, uh, this, uh, discussion about, uh, your new sure. film and, uh, the, Perhaps future of cinema. Perhaps you'll be back again <laughs> next time. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you're working on next. I know you've just got to fill them out, so. But uh, I would advise anyone who's watching this to go see it. I saw it on Wednesday. It's great. It definitely is a tour de force. Russell Crowe's amazing. He definitely is a shark. Thanks. Okay. I really appreciate it. And if anything I, that I said about the future of anything comes true, call me. Let me know. I I will. I will. Of course. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks very much, Noel. All right. Thanks very much. Bye.